In this video, I want to talk about pencil, drawing in pencil, graphite, or drawing in metal point. Now, this is a drawing I'm working on in pencil. This is an Indian rhinoceros. And you can see that I still have shading to do on the body area, but the head area is almost done. And there are many ranges of gray that you can get I think with this one, I've been using both a number two and a number one Dixon Ticonderoga pencil. So with just two grades of softness in the lead, there's quite a bit of variation in the grays that you can get with pencil. Now, what I've been doing today is a little bit of an experiment or a demonstration um, on the left is a drawing done in graphite, and on the right is a drawing currently done in pewter. And what this is about, when you draw in graphite or in pencil, in order to pick up, this is the key that I've drawn in both examples. And it's a, obviously a metallic surface. And on neither of the drawings have I picked up the highlights yet. Or um, I have some of them isolated, but I, I haven't really worked on the highlights. So this is just the basic beginning of a drawing. On the left, I've used pencil, a number two pencil. And in order to get the metallic look, I found I had to add blue a very light blue shading to some of the area to get that metallic sheen or the metallic shade of the key. Now in contrast, this one is in pewter. Now the key is actually metal, so you would think that it would be more, um, would be closer to the true look of the key if you draw it in metal. But pewter on this surface, this is um, Winsor & Newton Designer's Gouache um, on paper, on Winsor & Newton paper. Pewter on that surface comes out almost a brownish. And I've done other pewter drawings on marble dust and rabbit skin glue and they come out more bluish. So depending on the surface preparation you'll get a different uh, color hue to the metal if you draw in metal point. So here is, this is the pewter that I used to draw that. And again I haven't darkened it up, I haven't done the highlights. But it doesn't really look like the key. Even though this is more graphic looking, and you can see areas of blue, that looks more realistic right now than the metal point. So to correct this, um, if I want to take the, the metal point drawing further, I would actually go through my different metals that I have to draw with. And this is aluminum. And aluminum gives off a bluish cast anyway. So I will be going over this drawing with aluminum. And those are the two options, really. If you work in graphite, if graphite is your basis, there's your pencil, there's your um, paper stub for blending, and you can use an eraser. Now, Sometimes you can get away with an eraser on with metal point, but not very often. Metal is much more permanent. But going back to the graphite, inexpensive. Uh, this is a Prismacolor, but you can use inexpensive colors. And you can go over uh, any subject with a colored pencil. So there are your supplies for doing it that way. And... With metal point, you need the gouache paint um, to surface the paper, and then you would need a choice of metals to pick out which is going to match 
the metal that you're drawing. Now this is um, 12 karat gold. Um, this one is silver. This is almost uh, completely pure silver. It's 0.9999% pure silver. This is a, a thicker piece of copper, and this is copper. And you have to do some experimentation. Generally, copper gives off a brownish color. Silver is whitish blue. Gold is yellowish, but it also tends to fade very easily. Now, pewter, in um, vintage pewter has lead in it. So if you can't put it into a holder, such as this, aluminum, or you don't want to make one of your own like this with pewter wire, this is a pewter stylus that I happen to find um, on Etsy. And what this does, you can see that my pewter wire is, I think, 12 gauge. It might be 18 gauge. Uh, it's, I think it's 12. And it's very thick at the end, and even though I've more or less gotten it to a point, this has a very fine point. And if you just do a search on Etsy for pewter stylus, you should be able to find one. It was fairly inexpensive. Pewter itself is so soft. I had this in my pocket, and it started to get bent just from my body heat. So... There are so many different properties to different metals. Um, what I don't have here is some steel. But once you work with metal point, you will see that each metal gives off certain colors as it oxidizes. Now, this pewter, even though it looks a little bit brownish now compared to the graphite drawing, it will look more bluish gray as it oxidizes. So when you're considering doing this, you have to consider how much time you're willing to give not only the drawing, but the final effect. Let's say you were doing this for a client of some kind. You might lean toward the graphite with the color pencil um, blended in simply because it's faster. This, any kind of pure metal, takes at least a week uh, to start showing whatever uh, color tendencies it's going to have as it oxidizes. You have to be careful when drawing with gold. Um, I do have 24 karat gold too. Gold tends to really fade out to nothing and I don't know why that is. Um, but what I'm going to do with this pewter key drawing is I'm going to go over it with aluminum. And now what that is going to do, it is going to impart more of a bluish hue to it. It's also going to change how the two metals oxidize as it ages. So I won't really know what this is going to look like for about a week. Then I'll have a sense of, is this the direction I want to go in, or is it better to just add... Um, faster detail and highlights, being able to use um, an eraser more easily. Um, you can tell on the rhinoceros that, well, maybe you can't really tell. Some of these little white dots are eraser marks because I would fill in um, the skin and the plates and then go back and say, well, there should be more dappling through there. So it's really a add and remove process where, as metal point, is more of an adding process. You can sometimes use very fine sandpaper, this is 1500 grit, to get small corrections done, but you don't really want to do that because it will show up. So with metal point, you have to more or less have in your mind that you know how you're going to draw it. You have to draw with a little bit more confidence because you can't always use an eraser. Now, keys are very good subjects because almost everybody has keys. 
And another way to develop your eye as far as lights and darks and colors is to use different metals for the key subject. Now if I were going to draw this, this is a brass key, and if I were going to draw this in graphite, I would have to choose, uh, brass is made up of copper and zinc. So even though it doesn't look red, I have to have somewhat of a copper color in there. And then this is like a burnt umber and a yellow. So if I were going to draw that brass key, I would need the regular graphite pencil and three tones that when layered together are going to simulate the color of the brass. And then you can go back over it like the umber mixed over the red would give you really nice darks. So this is a work in pro um, progress. And I know that's not coming in very clearly because the I haven't really defined it. So it, it just looks like a gray shape right now. And because graphite is easier, this one has much more definition. But that's just a little bit of an overview between the differences or the possibilities you have when you're working in either graphite or metal point.